my name is uh, Fredrik Lagerström, and I am a lot of things in my title, technical support, education and development. Um, and my favorite program uh, is not Impact yet. Uh, it's pre-stress because I am uh, more of a calculation software. Uh, and um, I will, or I got uh, the invitation from Peter and uh, he said that just make something simple. Uh, but I will not promise that because there will be a few formulas in my uh, presentation. Um, and I am going to tell you about the new features in pre-stress that we've done during 2018 and 2019. And uh, then uh, my colleague Pierre will uh, talk a little bit about the uh, uh, calculation tab in the project manager. Uh, I will talk more about uh, pre-stress and uh, with uh, pre-stress it is more when you have to do uh, more detailed uh, calculations when the utilization uh, is close to 100%. Um, the uh, tool uh, in uh, PMCalc uh, will be able to handle hollow cores, uh, but for pre-stress it might be all other pre-stress slabs or beams uh, that you have in your project. It is also possible to use uh, the pre-stress as a normal uh, beam software if you're inclined to do that. Uh, and um, when we are using the calculation tab in uh, Project Manager, um, the, there will be a lot of default values set. But if you want to change a few settings, then it might be better to use uh, pre-stress in that sense. Uh, because everything can be set and changed in pre-stress. And yeah, uh, if you're uh, just a normal user of uh, pre-stress and just doing calculations, this is the impact user day. So everyone is uh, familiar with impact, but it might be that you want to do uh, a calculation that is not requiring impact. So uh, the agenda, uh, these are the uh, things that we have uh, uh, developed during these two years. So uh, I will go through them in a little bit more detail. Uh, so this is the agenda and of course it's actually two pages. Um, so there is a lot of development has, uh, that has been done for the past two years or maybe even three years now that has transformed pre-stress from a pretty average uh, program until the top-notch program that we have now. So uh, with uh, the uh, things that we have, uh, one really big thing is torsion. And uh, we are looking very much into the uh, Holocore product standard EN 1168 and uh, has almost transferred basically almost everything from that into uh, pre-stress. And one of the big things is torsion and how that is handled. And uh, one thing that this can be uh, used for is if you have a hollow core, for instance, and then at the end here, you might have a outer wall or a external wall or something like that, or some load that is not loaded uh, just on top of the whole holocore, but it's actually a little bit of a torsional effect. But we uh, also can handle the um, normal uh, torsion effect that Eurocodes provides, and that is for all other elements, so uh, for beams uh, of different types, uh, yeah, and uh, Holocore, even though Holocore has uh, its own particular uh, standard. 
but we use uh, this picture that many have seen when they are browsing through the code, but uh, few actually know what is happening uh, with it, so they just flip away from it. Uh, but we are uh, using this theory uh, when using pre-stress. Uh, we have uh, new results, so they are both graphical and they are in tables. And uh, since the tables are just black and white, then I use this color picture instead, which shows the torsional uh, graph for a beam that I've modeled. We have uh, punching of hollow cores. Uh, so if you have uh, just one uh, point load acting on a hollow core, we can uh, look through the punching. So uh, any uh, local effects are taken care of. We have um, three different types of uh, local uh, things that can uh, break the elements, and that is the splitting, spalling, and bursting. Uh, which are stresses acting on uh, the pre-stressed element. And we have taken this uh, theory that is used in Eurocode with what is called the Stratton tie model, where we uh, model the uh, loads and can apply the reinforcement where it needs to be. A normal um, uh, element maybe not be using uh, uh, the anchorage of uh, pre-stressing strands, but uh, if there is cracks in the ends, it might need uh, extra anchorage reinforcement, and that can be calculated as well. Uh, and also when we look at the pre-stressed beams, uh, they very often, uh, or they can have uh, recesses in the ends, um, like we see here. So here is the beam and we have uh, a support that is raised up here and then we need extra reinforcement in order to uh, transfer the load uh, up to the support. And this is a standalone calculation that is being performed after the uh, beam has been designed. Uh, we also have uh, implemented the automatic design of stirrups. And uh, the best part with this was that before you had to actually put in all the stirrups uh, that you needed uh, for your element. Now we only have a checkbox, so we can get it uh, automatically designed. Uh, one really big thing is the um, strand pattern manager. Uh, this is something that uh, impact people are quite familiar with, their strand patterns and different strand patterns. Uh, here it is possible to customize your own uh, patterns. They are not linked to impact though. Uh, but um, we can select the strands that we want in the calculation. Uh, by defining where all the locations are, and then it's just to load in the possible uh, locations and just select the ones that I want in the calculation. It is also possible to uh, unload and uh, or deselect if there are too many uh, uh, strands in the element. And that was something that uh, Nikolai talked about before, that uh, when there are too many uh, reinforcement uh, or too much reinforcement, then this is the place where the uh, uh, calculation engineer, designer, uh, actually says that, ah, I don't need my 16 strands. I might only need my 12. Uh, it is also possible to uh, yeah, save the patterns uh, for easy access and for fast modeling so you can see that ah, here I have a hollow core that is 380 millimeters high and I can just load in that particular pattern with all possible 
places, and I can just uh, select the uh, strands that I need. There's also a check to not get the um, uh, pre-stressing strands in one end, so it becomes like curved like a banana. Um, but it can actually see that ah, uh, I have my uh, center of gravity and then my center of pre-stressing to actually see that it is uh, okay, so it's not curving uh, unexpectedly. One of uh, the later things that we implemented was the automatic generation of load combinations. And before you had to define all the loads individually. And now we can just, uh, when we are uh, defining the uh, loads here, we just say that it is an office load. And I can then just select my load case by just uh, stating that yeah, I am in the final stage or something like that, any of these normal uh, stages. Uh, I just select my uh, dead load and I just select my live load and automatically the um, parameters here will be set. And then you realize that, oops, uh, I made uh, office load but it should have been the uh, shopping load or domestic load because they are changing the uh, um, uh, the, the way that the building is being used. And these uh, parameters are being changed by just going in and selecting the shopping and I get my other parameters here. Uh, it is possible to uh, import uh, DVG uh, files uh, and just say that, yeah, I have my DVG file and import the uh, um, polyline and I have now heard that we also can import the polyline from impact uh, into um, um, pre-stress and but uh, that is something that will be more uh, used when we look at the um, um, yeah the um, PM calc uh, so we can take the polyline uh, from the uh, PM into our calculation. One really neat feature is the uh, custom beam. So instead of defining uh, a normal uh, flange beam, hollow core, we can now put together our own beam. So we have different segments of a beam. So we can have a flange beam. Uh, just a uh, rectangular beam and then a lower rectangular beam, another rectangular beam with another height, and then a half flange uh, beam. And we can put this together into one beam and uh, apply the reinforcement and then we can see the recess in top here. Just to uh, be able to yeah, put together different beams uh, where we have um, flanges and where we don't have flanges because there might be uh, a wall or something like that in standing there instead. Uh, we also support lightweight concrete according to Eurocode 2, uh, chapter 11, and that is not widely used. But uh, people that want to be using lightweight concrete uh, in pre-stress, it is now possible to do so. Here is the most advanced formula that I will show you today. It's the eigenfrequency formula. So uh, we calculate the uh, eigenfrequencies along the lifespan. Um, and for different uh, support positions, for different concretes, depending on how old the uh, uh, element is. So in the beginning, in the factory, it might have one eigenfrequency. During transport, it might have another because the concrete has hardened a little bit. And then in the uh, final stages, uh, we can see what the eigenfrequency is for uh, 
the uh, element in the finished attraction. Uh, if there are any Danish people here, uh, then we have made particular um, improvements to the Danish annex, where we have uh, uh, key members, uh, Neule element. We have uh, consequence classes and combination of actions. Um, and these are being defined uh, here in the uh, right part of the load combination. We actually say what kind of combination of action do you want. And it's possible to uh, combine my load cases by just clicking on the load cases here. And apart from the pre-stress, we also have dabbled a little bit into web development and made a concrete creep and shrinkage app. And this follows also Eurocode 2. And um, for those of you that doesn't have a QR code uh, phone ready now, it's just to scan this uh, when you look back on the... Uh, live presentations when you're back in the office tomorrow. Uh, this uh, QR code goes into the portal and uh, the portal that we have is basically a compilation of uh, different applications. Uh, you have the impact wiki there, for instance. Um, we also started up a pre-stress wiki uh, for more information about uh, how pre-stress uh, should be handled on that user manual and so on. And the Concrete Creep and Shrinkage app is free to use. And with this, uh, it is possible to enter the different parameters that is uh, requested here according to the code. Um, we get uh, calculations where you can uh, see the result, but also uh, all the formulas being used. So, yeah, it might be a little bit more tricky formulas here than the eigenfrequency. But these are just handled uh, automatically. Here you can see the reference to the code as well. And here it is the yeah, shrinkage uh, and the creep values are being uh, calculated here uh, just for uh, anyone to uh, look at. And here I am now uh, looking at the final part that we, or the last part that is uh, currently in development but will be released in version 16, if I recall correct. And uh, more about that will my colleague Pierre be talking. All right. So the connection to uh, Impact Project Manager. I actually thought I should do a, a demo to show you guys. So there. So let's start here with just a simple model in. Uh, in a project manager, this is a this is a test model. There is a, uh, a floor here, uh, which uh, contains basically hollow cords. So just we're going to try it with hollow cords. Uh, the connection also supports, uh, as mentioned uh, by Hokem, uh, pre-stress beam and pre-stress slab. Maybe I should introduce myself. Yes, uh, my name is Pierre Wilson. <laughs> I'm the head of development of the calculation programs we do in. Uh, in Malmö, uh, including the winds take, pre-stress, and beam energy, and also the things you saw online here. All right, let's dig into it. Um, the first thing we notice is we have a new module, the calculation module, the same as we have the new environmental uh, module. So uh, let's have a, have a look. We have actually now a, uh, a new option on the right click on the floor. It says opening calculation view. So now we get a two-dimensional view of that floor. Um, what we also see is we have a, 
a new tab here called Calculation. And here are some options for the calculation module. The first thing we see is actually the, the current uh, code setting, which is uh, Eurocode. Uh, and it supports a couple of um, natural annexes, uh, which you can see here in the settings tab. These are the same ones that are supported in uh, pre-stress. Pre-stress is being run in the background here. So it's the uh, Eurocode standard, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, Finnish, and British. Right. Close that one. Um, so what we can do now is we can simply select the elements that we are interested in doing a cal calculation on. So let's say we look at, for example, these three. Um, and then uh, now we want to define some sort of load. We've made it this first iteration of these calculation models uses a simple load module. We basically have template loads, which are uh, coming from the code and will change according to the natural annex. So you basically just say, I know this is a office building, for example, or something like that. And then you just choose that and it would do a proper calculation of it. So for the sake of argument, I just take one of the really big ones. The uh, areas in large shops and department stores. Um, and also I need to define the actual concrete quality because it's not always defined, it's usually just defined as concrete. So I set the concrete quality to it, in this case uh, uh, 40, 50, and maybe I should just put it in the bottom so because I wanted to show you when it comes out not being uh, sufficient uh, actually. Um, right, and this is all we have to do. Now we're ready to do a calculation. And I, there are two options on the calculation button. You can calculate what you have selected, or you can say, just calculate all four for me. So it takes a little bit of a time, so I'm going to just do the, the, the selected ones to begin with. So let's start the calculation. What happens now is we connect to the database. We get all the information connected to these elements. It's uh, packaged information, sends it to pre-stress. It, uh, it do, that's a calculation and a code check, and eventually you will get the result back. What happens here is we take the template load and, the, and they will make uh, load combinations in ultimate limit state uh, for you and just return the worst case to you. So this is a little bit, not with all the details, it's just to get something started, to get some, some, some sort of uh, results to begin with. And now you see that it's just running in the background and you see there, you have saving results and calculation is done. And we get the report back. It's very small, I can hardly see it here. So let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. And it says here, for example, you can see at the end, it says sheer resistance exceeded. We have utilization ratio of 115%. Now that's not good. So what uh, Project Manager told us was this is not okay. So you see there's a little a little, uh, little circle with a color in it, and it's red. Um, so if I go back to the calculation view, I see these are now colored red, just like all the other colors that you can set in, uh, in, uh, in the, what is it, home? You can have element color. So it's, they're, they're saying the calculation one, you can choose. Right. So. So maybe that wasn't so good, so just to show you what you can do in uh, PM is we say select one and we just say, okay, we put a little more of a, a higher quality concrete and we just do a calculation for that one and see what happens. So it does the same thing, it connects to the database, it gets the geometry, the strand patterns, the qualities, and it does a code check according to the chosen uh, natural annex. It does utilization ratios. So let's see what we got here. Oh, there's no comments. Um, all the utilization ratios are now below one, which means it's okay. And you can also see the little dot there is now green. So if we go back to the calculation view, you see now that that one's okay. Now, these are all template loads, and maybe you want a little more freedom. 
So what you can do is actually just select one. And you can say, open in pre-stress. Again, same process, gets the information from the database, opens pre-stress for you, and stops there. Now, so how you can, now you can go in and you can do all more detailing. You can uh, change number of uh, load combination, you can change the loads, you can change whatever. And uh, you also get the actual geometry that's in the database. So you don't really have to make a drawing, put a drawing to the engineer, the engineer reads the drawing, adds the input, maybe makes a mistake. No, it's just the same way. <laughs> so, so let's say, let's do, you, know, you open it up, I can, uh, for example, open, I can change things. So if you see the whole curve now coming from the, from the actual database. The strand pattern that was chosen. So let's do a calculation. And we do a, a code check. And it says here everything is green. That's good. And then I can just say uh, save, uh, export the results from uh, pre stress. And then I can go back to uh, PM and I can say import results. And I do that import. And now I see you get a little, little green uh, dot there saying everything's okay. And now that would be the same thing as doing the automatic one. Only you stopped in free stress, you can do changes and then you can uh, go back. And you can also just choose whatever it is and uh, see the report again, for example. Um, and of course, this is the first iteration. Next step we want to do is to do a more um, better load handling that you can add your line loads, your, your point loads. You can do your load combinations from your whole project or for your company that will be used for all your elements. Um, and also maybe look into getting some sort of feedback saying, this wasn't okay, maybe you can change the strand pattern, this will happen for you. And then you can go back into AutoCAD and do the changes and do a new calculation. So yeah, that was basically it for the connection. Thank you.